walks out in the morning light It's a work, a work, it's a working light Through the mansions of fear Through the mansions of pain See my daddy walking towards them factory gates in the rain Factory takes his hearing But he understands He went to the mill at five in the morning We worked until dinner time and then till 9 or 10 at night. On Saturday, it could be till 11 and often till 12 at night. We were sent to clean the machinery on Sunday. Anonymous child, 1840. Although child labor has drastically improved since 1890, when 19% of US children between 10 and 15 years of age were employed, it has not yet fully disappeared. And there are still measures that need to be taken by the government as well as the people in order to educate the greater population that child labor still exists and needs to be tackled. I was seven years old when I went to work in the mill. They learnt me to knit. Well, I was so little that they had to build me a box to get up on to put the sock in the machine. I worked in the hosiery mill for a long time, and well, then we finally moved back to the country. But me and my sister Molly finally went back up there in 1910, and I went to work in the silk mill. Molly went to work in the hosiery mill. We worked 12 hours a day for 50 cents. When paydays come around, I draw three dollars. That was for six days, 72 hours. I remember I lacked 50 cents having enough to pay my board. Bertha Miller, Thomasville, North Carolina. Points out, she worked 72 hours, 12 hours a day for 50 cents, and she was still not able to make a profit. She was still 50 cents in debt because she had to pay for room and board. Bertha Miller, after working 72 hours in one week, made negative money. This just shows how corrupt the child labor system was. The smallest child in the factories was scavengers. They go into the machine while it's going. It is very dangerous when they first come, but they become used to it. Charles Aberdeen, Manchester, Cotton Factory, 1832. As the unknown woman from the Cotton Factory highlighted, the conditions in which children worked were extremely unsafe. In fact, around 1900, 25 to 30,000 deaths and 1 million injuries per year occurred on industrial jobs. Many of the deaths occurred on railroad jobs, which were especially dangerous. Fires, machinery accidents, train wrecks, and other misfortunes were common. No federal regulation of safety and no enforcement of state or local safety regulations existed. Sarah Golding was poorly, and so she stopped her machine. James Birch, the overlooker, knocked her to the floor. She got up as well as she could. He knocked her down again. Then she was carried to her house. She was found dead in her bed. There was another girl called Mary. She knocked her food can to the floor. The master, Mr. Newton, kicked her and caused her to wear away till she died. There was another, Caroline Thompson, who was beaten till she went out of her mind. The overlookers used to cut off the hair of any girl caught talking to a lad. This head shaving was a dreadful punishment. We were more afraid of it than any other punishment for girls are proud of their hair. Unknown Woman, Cotton Factory, 1839. When I was seven years old, I went to work at Mr. Marshall's factory at Shrewsbury. If a child became sleepy, the overlooker touches the child on the shoulder and says, Come here. In the corner of this room, there is an iron cistern filled with water. He takes the boy by the legs and dips him in the cistern and then sends him back to work. Jonathan Dow, 1832. Here we are at an average park. When child labor was at its peak, it was very prevalent in the United States, and there was not enough legislation that regulated wages, treatment, or hours of these vulnerable workers. The 1900 census uncovered that approximately 2 million children were working in mills, mines, fields, factories, stores, and on city streets across the United States. Because of the census, a national movement began in order to end child labor in the United States. Lewis Hine was hired by the National Child Labor Committee in 1908 as a photographer who reported child labor, also known as a muckraker. Karl Marx and Charles Dickens were two men among many attempting to help increase the opinion against child labor. Charles Dickens, actually, Charles Dickens actually worked in a factory himself at the age of 12. He wrote the novel Oliver Twist, which contains some of the most effective attacks by Dickens.
How old would you like to be before you started to work? 13. 16. Next year when I turn three, I'll be working. <laughs> How many hours a day would you be willing to work? Uh, three. Eight. 185 minutes. <laughs> what would be a fair hourly wage? 50. 50 what? $50. $50 an hour? Yeah. No. $15. $15 an hour? $425. $13 an hour. Believe me if you said less than 100 years ago, kids worked for 72 hours a week to make 50 cents. Would you yeah. believe that? Kind of. Yes, I would. No. Why not? Because it seems kind of stupid. <laughs> How about you? Yes. <laughs>
Children have much more free time, and sometimes that means that their parents believe they should be working during this time. Regulations on education have already been proposed. However, there needs to be specific people delegated to make sure that children are getting the education they need, instead of working at low-paying jobs with poor conditions. There needs to be a bill passed by Congress that is constantly regulated. The drastic measures need to be taken. For example, the hiring of officials specifically for regulation on the laws of child labor would help to maintain control over the law. In order for child labor to finally come to a complete end, a foot needs to be put down. The process of a bill becoming a law is not quick or easy, but needs to occur in order for regulation on child labor laws and the overall power of the country to work toward the final goal, ending child labor. To get a bill passed, the steps are as follows. First, a bill is written up as an idea. Then it is either introduced in the House of Representatives or the Senate. It then moves to a committee who can approve, rewrite, or kill the bill. From there, the bill is voted on by the House of Representatives, and if a majority of the representatives say yes, then it is passed on to the U.S. Senate. From the House and Senate, it goes to the President, who can either sign it into a law, veto it, or leave it for more than 10 days, allowing it to become a law without his signature, also known as a pocket veto. If the President does veto it, there is still a chance that it can become a law. It goes back to the House and the Senate, and has to be voted with two-thirds of the House in favor and two-thirds of the Senate in favor in order for it to be passed. Although this process can take a long time, it is worth it in order for child labor to finally come to an end after all these years. This bill should be specific with details on regulation as well as how these regulations will occur. Officials should be given the power to investigate any actions that seem as though they may be connected to child labor or helping bring child labor back to the U.S. in any way. See, the United States has made a lot of improvements in terms of child labor. They have passed various legislations to regulate the hours that children have to work, the ages in, much, in which they must be, and the conditions under which they work. This woman refused to be interviewed for this film.